Hey, hello. Your second trap for the Wolf Girl, like a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, looking at see how many threat models or use cases a security team can handle. You know, uh, when, you, when you turn in these videos, I'm hoping you're coming to, to hear some ideas about uh, information security or you know, maybe how all the puzzle pieces go together, that sort of thing. Uh, I hope you're not coming for fashion <laughs> because. As it was pointed out to me, uh, by some friendly jibbing in the ribs, um, I've been wearing all blue. I got like an entire week of nothing but blue shirts. And of course I'm wearing a blue shirt again today. So, but it makes you wonder like, how many shirts do you really need, right? If you have like five blue shirts, that's, that should be fine. There's a finite number of blue shirts anyone should have. And there's a finite number of use cases or threat models anyone should have. And like shirts, you should be cleaning them, checking them, and rotating them. And so that's the tip for you guys today. Give some thought to how many you should have. Now let me let me break this down for you. If you consider threat modeling to be a component of incident response cycle, which I do, uh, it comes in on preparation, right? Planning out what's gonna happen, but in the threat model, it comes in on identification, having a use case that matches that threat model for monitoring and for security controls. Then you go all the way back around through the circle, right? Containment, eradication, recovery. It also comes back in, in lessons learned where you document and either create a new threat model in use case or revise your current threat models in use cases after the incident has happened. Now, what that logically means is there's a finite number of threat models and therefore use case you should have. It takes time to create these. Um, maybe a couple days a, a month if you're creating one a month. It takes time to maintain these. Again, maybe a couple days a month per, per threat model just to update it, make sure it's still relevant, uh, track with whatever controls you have put in place and whatever controls are required. Uh, on the use case side, it takes time to check for these. You've got uh, time to create all the rules. You've got time to run the searches and respond to the alerts. You've got time to uh, update those use cases when you have updates in your SIM infrastructure and your other technology infrastructure. You've got maintenance overhead. All that takes time. As a matter of fact, it's often that, that last part, that last mile, right, the maintenance that uh, bites people in the butt. So you see these security companies or security teams or other stand up great IR programs and everything's going good and then year in, two in, three in, they start to have rot, right? Because the documentation is out of date, people haven't maintained it, people haven't updated it, what have you. I would put forward, if you're creating a use case a month, you should also be evaluating how often those use cases have fired and retiring them, so you're not maintaining too many. A typical team may be able to maintain, let's say 24. A typical team may be able to maintain 24. It's going to take you two years to get to that point, but after that two-year mark, every month when you're creating a new one, you should be evaluating the existing ones you have in place and retiring the ones that within two years you haven't seen, right? If, if they haven't triggered, if the use case hasn't fired, that can be retired or subsumed in the larger use cases. You don't need six pairs of blue shirts, but you do need a set of use cases that is being maintained maintainable, it's not too much for you guys to look for and hunt for, it's not too much for your threat modeling team to consistently create and evaluate. Uh, too many is no good, too few, you gotta change your shirt. Hit me up in social media and comments, what do you do? What do you think the right number is for your team?